Because, like, y'all telling people going to hell and y'all not living right. The church didn't really do a good job of telling me why. And it didn't do a good job of giving me scripture and equipping me with um, cultivating a relationship with God. Ha! Come on, God. Hey, y'all. What's up? I had a question on my video um, of my testimony. And they were saying, did you transition out of being gay and stop sinning because you were afraid of hell? The answer to that is that I didn't do anything. Jesus did. We have this concept of that we're managing sin, but we can't manage sin because if we did it in our own strength, we wouldn't need a savior. That's the whole point of Jesus, of being a savior, to save us. Through him, we are redeemed. Through him, we are made righteous, holy, and sanctified. In John 3, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son um, so that we wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. It is through Jesus that we have everlasting life. I'm not doing anything. But also another point to that is that I knew about hell, but I do not fear God because of hell. I fear him because I love him so much and I don't want to do anything to break his heart. Um, because he has truly given me peace and a love that surpasses my understanding. And it's through me learning more about him, truly seeking him because I was at a point where I was so desperate to just seek him that everything that is not of God has to go. Every unclean spirit, demonic spirit, every fleshly desire, as you get closer to God, it falls off. So how did I get to that point of being so desperate? As a youth growing up in the church, my mom was in choir. We knew, I knew about hell. I knew about the Ten Commandments. I knew about like judgment. I knew about sin. And I knew that hell was not a great place. Uh, and it was like demons, monsters. I never was into monsters or horror films. I was like, I don't want none of that. <laughs> but our, cons our understanding of Jesus had been skewed. Mine was skewed. Because I thought he was a person that was so judgmental. And coming from my background of not having a father, I've already had a, um, a demonic seed of rejection. So my understanding of God was that he's mad at me. He's not happy with me. I have all these expectations that I need to do. or And if I mess up, he's going to leave me. He's going to be upset with me. Which is not actually what Jesus said. We need to do better at cultivating relationship with God. That's the why behind it. The why behind God created us to create a covenant and fellowship with us. He doesn't want robots. He wants us to choose to love him. He wants a relationship with us. As a body, as Christ, as the church, we haven't done such a good job with that. Because in my walk as a young person, I was just thinking that God was like so upset with me. And then when I was bullied and called gay and then the internet came out and then I found myself looking up gay and I found myself going into pornography and then I found myself seeking comfort in pornography and I didn't really like it, but I was like, well, this is what they're saying. So I guess this has to be right. And then when I went back into scripture and then I found that it says homosexuality is an abomination and then it made me feel some type of way. It made me feel very sad because I heard I am an abomination. That's not what the scripture said. The scripture said the act and the behavior. He did not say me. What he said about me, sorry, I have it on my wall. Matthew 3, 17 says, you are my beloved son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. That's what Jesus said about me. That's what Jesus said about you. You are not an abomination. It's the act. When you keep doing something, you... You learn to love it. The pornography and the self-pleasure and the same sex attraction, I learned to love it. I was being groomed in that in that demonic classroom. <laughs> Come to find out, as I was in high school and graduating into college, my the pastor at that church um, had sexual allegations against the men, misconduct, sexual abuse toward the men. And it just baffled me because now we kept talking about sin, but here we are. The people that I was looking up to are not even being in alignment with that because they didn't have know Jesus and have a relationship with him. And here I am shaming myself and condemning myself um, and coming up with these ideas that God doesn't love me and that he's mad at me. 
But here y'all out here acting like fools. So I said, bet. So when my mom stopped going to church. I said, we stopped going to church. I, I always felt like God is still real. He's still with me. But I had questions, but I didn't really felt like I could ask questions to God because you don't ask questions to God. But that's a misconception that about, about what I had a, about about what a true father is. Um, it wasn't until two years ago where I was managing my life and trying to pursue a career and trying to be enough in my career, and everything was still not happening. And so, and then I was like, well, let me just fall more into the world and to the same such attractiveness. I've been holding off so much. Let me just go out, and it felt good for a little bit, but then. It was like, this is this doesn't feel good. Like, my life is getting worse. Like, I'm more stressed. I'm more anxious. I'm still feeling lonely. I'm not feeling truly loved. I feel like I have to work in order to get love for people. I also want to be married with one person. I don't want multiple partners. This lifestyle does not seem um, fruitful <laughs> and peaceful. In scripture, Matthew 12, 28 says... Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. I just wanted love and I wanted peace. And people kept telling me about Jesus. And I was like, well, I haven't really given him a chance fully. Let me dive in. And... I get choked up and teary about it because once I completely just said like, hey, like, I just want you. And like, if you give me perfect peace and the scripture says he gives you perfect peace that surpasses all understanding and you give me a love that's unconditional, I want that. And he gave me that and he kept refreshing me and he kept in, and the people who are around me and, and the church that I go to now, which is so great, have helped me and not judged me or not shamed me and condemned me and helped me cultivate a relationship with my father. And I didn't have a father, so I didn't know what that looks like, but he loves me. He's gentle at heart. And he said he's kind and that he loves you and he calls you beloved. And I just felt so unworthy because of the things that, honestly, I accidentally fell into, but then just kept agreeing to it because I didn't know what to do. And God says there is a way, there's a better way, and it's me. And so for anyone, no matter what you're going through, your job, you're not going to manage sin. That's not the idea. I still get tempted and that's okay, but I have Jesus and I know how to get through it. And he's going to redeem and continue allowing my character to be developed with him. And I hear people, that's why I love my church so much, because there's people that I know, like, um, you know, people who are married and they say, like, I still have issues with lust and, and desires. Like, sin is still sin, no matter if it's homosexual or, hetero or heterosexual adultery and having multiple wives. God is still not pleased with that. Um, but we, we don't get better at sin. We get better at having a relationship with God. So my plea is that we get better at relationship and that we understand that he's a father, that he loves us. The Lord is grieved. He's He's hurt and, and he's sorrowful and he's pained that there's so many people who haven't experienced love. Um, and we're looking for love, but we're looking for it in all the wrong places. And he wants to be that father for you that you didn't have. He wants to be the love that you didn't get. He wants to heal the brokenness. He wants to heal the pain. He wants to heal your trauma. And he says, you are worthy and you are not your pain. You are not your trauma. You are not what was said to you or what was bullied to you or what didn't happen to you. You are who God says. And everything that the Lord says has been said in love. And that's what I want to say um, <laughs> to answer that question. It's relationship. That's all. Love y'all. I'll see y'all later. <laughs>